Mayor, I'm going to go ahead and start recording, so you're free okay. to begin anytime. Okay. Okay, we will call this council regular session to order Wednesday, October 21st. The time is 7 p.m. Uh, please allow me to pledge, do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, with that, we'll open it up for visitor comments. If you have a comment, please raise your hand and we'll identify you and give you the, allow you five minutes. Please keep your talks to five minutes. Do I get a, is that, is that an adequate, Mayor? Yep, that is adequate. Go ahead and state your name for the record. Sure, my name is Jose Castilleja, C-A-S-T-I-L-L-E-J-A. -L -L -E I see the smiles on their faces, and uh, I've said that a time or two in the, in the past. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Mayor, uh, and city administrators, and uh, counselors, agency heads. Uh, I'm here today to request, humbly, for uh, partial funds to help uh, with our banquet that we have going on next month. Uh, these funds are going to be going towards um, uh, the meal that we have planned for um, our guests. And it's going to be, um, an part of it's going to be the, an awards ceremony. So um, if, uh, if you would, that's what uh, I'm here to ask for. Okay, so how much are you asking for? Well, I'd like, the, the whole thing is about $1,500. So uh, if whatever you could uh, afford to, to contribute to that, we would be greatly appreciated. Where is Counselor Locke? I want to get his input because- Yeah, who's invited? <laughs> who's invited? <laughs> Keep your muted. So, uh... Yeah, this is a ward ceremony for the guys. It's uh, going to be a great uh, thing going on for our, our officers that we have to show some recognition for a lot of the great work they've done. And uh, Jose's done a great job putting it together. Thanks, Counselor. Yeah, I, this is a I can't see no better reason to, to help support this did cause out. I know you guys did, were not allowed to have it last year or you skipped it last year or did you have it? Yes, it was supposed to be earlier this year, but with COVID and uh, there was a, some significant uh, events that happened that we were able to, weren't able to take care of it earlier. Mm -hmm. I certainly think it's important to uh, boost the morale of our police department in any way that we can. Uh, they work hard, they work effectively and efficiently and uh, I've always been impressed with our, uh, with our police force. And especially now, and especially when they get thrown under the bus for uh, defunding and those kinds of issues coming up uh, uh, nationwide. Uh, I, I, I think this is a good way to show our citizens that we support our uh, police department. Thank you, Counselor. What can we afford? I knew that question was going to come up. So your original budget of um, council allocated funds is $10,000 for the entire fiscal year. Um, that is July through June. Uh, you have remaining in that fund $9,470. Okay, Mayor, it's your call. Well... Uh, typically, we donate like about five hundred dollars to causes like this. It's okay. not common for us to donate five hundred. So I would go with the standard um, and ask the council to support a five hundred dollar um, towards the banquet for our police officers. I'll second I'll, that. I'll make that motion, as okay. stated by the mayor. Okay. Second. 
A motion's been made and seconded, and we can go ahead and vote on it because we are in our evening session uh, to allow $500 out of council funds to support the St. Helens Police Department banquet. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much, Jose. I just see you guys out there working every single day, and I just, you know, smiling, helping out our community members. I just, it's a real proud time, and we're lucky to have such good members on our force. Thank you, Councillor. We try every hard, every day uh, really hard to make a, a difference in our community. And so I've, I've been here since 2007 now, and uh, I've always enjoyed a good rapport with all the citizens. So it's, uh, we appreciate this uh, very much. Thank you very much for the, for the uh, very kind offer. Thank you. Well, and I think that all starts with leadership and you are a strong leader in our police department and we appreciate you coming here today and representing the fellas. Thanks, Mayor. Yep. Quick question, Jose. Yes, sir. At one time, you the police department at the library had different uh, programs for how uh, the police and the citizens could interact. Are there any plans to bring that back on when the, this endemic mess goes away? <laughs> yes, you're thinking of the uh, fr uh, third, first Thursdays. Yes. Yes, we do have plans to bring those back once we're able to uh, get past this and uh, do it safely. Uh, we definitely want to re-engage with our community members and answer any questions that they have. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, and hopefully we can do that donut day some way, somehow with the drive through <laughs> That's a big fundraiser for the uh, food bank. So well, the guys at Skinny's and uh, everywhere else in town, every time I buy them, I get the same old jokes every time. And I love it. Every <laughs> That's absolutely right. <laughs> All right, Jose, thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. Yep. All right. So let's, uh, is there any other visitor comments out there? No other comments. No other hand. Okay. So moving on, we're going to deliberate the easement uh, distinguishment at 205 Braden Street. The recap is it was pretty, we had a public hearing on this earlier, uh, pretty cut and dry. It was the uh, sewer put in and the developer decided they were going to change their lot lines and rerouted it. So the sewer is still in place. It's just adjusted and ready to roll. Do we make a motion to accept the plan or how does it go? Right. That's how it goes. Yep. Okay. Okay. I make a motion we accept the uh, easement change. Second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to uh, the, extinguish the easement at 205 Braden Street. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it was unanimous, Kathy. Okay, uh, deliberations, amendment to St. Helens Urban Renewal Plan. Again, this is nothing new. We went through our urban renewal agency and adopted this, and it got kicked to taxing district agency. From there. I move we approve, we go forward with the amendments to the St. Helens Urban Renewal Plan. Second. Okay, any public comment just before I do this, just because this was one that may have raised any concern. Yeah, and it's first reading tonight. Right, there's first reading. Right? Okay, that's right. Okay, so yes, we are actually, it has a lot of different moving parts. This has been a slow, methodical, that is correct. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded to uh, approve the amendments to the urban renewal plan by the St. Helens City Council. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so on that same subject is the first reading of Ordinance 3257, an ordinance making certain determinations and findings relating to the approved, approving the St. Helens Urban Renewal Plan Amendment to and directing that notice of the approval be published. Okay, moving on, resolution. 1901, a resolution adopting the City of St. Helens uh, Technological Telework Policies and Procedures Handbook. Move we adopt resolution number 1901. Second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to approve resolution 1901. Councillor President Morton. 
Yay. Councilor Lott? Yes. Councilor Carlson? Yes. Councilor Topaz? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Okay, resolution 1902, a resolution to adopt the city public library co collection development circulation and confidential policies. Move so we move. approve resolution um, 1902, right? Correct. Okay. And Councilor Topaz, you so moved it, right? I did. Okay. Resolution has been made and seconded to approve resolution 1902. Council President Morton. Yeah. Councilor Lott. Yeah. Councilor Carlson. Yes. Councilor Topaz. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Approve and authorize for signature. Four memorandum of understanding with St. Helens Police Association regarding uniforms. Move we approve um, and authorize for signature memor um, a memorandum of understanding for the police uniforms. It's hard That's to get it. <laughs> I got lost in the middle. Sorry. This has been made and seconded to approve and authorize for signature item four. Council President uh, Morton. Yay. Councilor Lott. Yes. Councilor Carlson. Yes. Councilor Topaz. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Consent agenda for acceptance. Five planning commission minutes dated September 6th or September 8th, 2020. Six parks and trails commission minutes dated September 14th, 2020. Seven library board minutes dated September 14th, 2020. Will we approve and consent agenda for acceptance as read five, six, and seven? Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to approve consent agenda for acceptance five, six, and seven. Council President Morton? Yay. Councilor Lott? Yes. Councilor Carlson? Yes. Councilor Topaz? Yes. And I'm going to yes as well. All right, consent agenda for approval. Eight, request for qualifications for St. Helens River Walk Project. Nine, request for qualifications for South First Street and Strand Street Road and Utility Extension Project. 10, athletic fill use process. 11, Amendment to Building Inspector Job Description, and 12, Accounts Payable Bill List. Move we approve consent agenda for approval, items 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, as read. Question? Yes. So today when we were talking about the First and Strand Street improvements and all utilities, I didn't hear anything about electricity. Is that is electricity going to be underground? How are we going to do that? Electricity is planned to be underground. Okay. That, that would be under the private utility side of this. Um, and there, there is it, it does address utility extensions under the private, you know, your, your natural gas and communications and things of that nature. All that all be underground. So. Okay. Okay. Turning a dedicated. Uh, conduit for all of those, basically a small tunnel or will they be separate uh, conduits? Uh, usually they're located separately. It's always a good idea to have an extra pipe in the ground for things that may come along in the future. But, uh, but it will not be a tunnel with all these things in it. Um, we'll leave that to the designers, but I would expect not, so. Okay. okay. Been a motion uh, and a second to approve consent agenda 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 as read. Councilor President Morton? Yay. Councilor Lott? Yes. Councilor Carlson? Yes. Councilor Topaz? Yes. I'm a yes as well. Can I get the person who did the second? Uh, it was Councilor Topaz, I think, who, who seconded it. That is correct. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, so uh, what did we have? Anything from our work session? I don't believe we did. Okay, um, so what do I have to report? Uh, well, um, it's election season, and uh, by the, our next meeting, we will have, uh, we'll know the results. So I uh, look forward to having this over and done with, and that. Uh, uh, hopefully we can just come back to being uh, um, a cohesive bunch 
and uh, continue to do all our work. Uh, no, I just got to say that we're doing a, a really good job in our area. And uh, I know for myself and others, I watch continue to, you know, I continue to wash my hands and, uh, and not touch my face and uh, wear a mask when needed. And uh, um, it's making a difference. So uh, I'm really happy that uh, our numbers are staying low as compared to the nation. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, what else do I have to report on? There's a lot of stuff going on with the city. Um, if you were not able to turn into our work session earlier, I would advise you to watch it. Um, there was a lot of uh, stuff in the planning phase of it, which was the opening. It wasn't supposed to be, but it is at the very beginning of our meeting. So you can watch it live and it'll give you an update. And further in the meeting, we talk about our first street in Riverfront, um, putting it out for our RFQ, which we just approved. So it's moving forward. It's happening. The reality of, of the waterfront is going forward with the vision that the citizens have had tons of input on and with the boardwalk that will be ADA accessible. Guaranteed, it's part of the um, grant process. So. That being said, I look forward to seeing what we get for qualified people to um, design. Uh, we just got a lot going on as a city and just know that we are moving forward. Uh, the staff is constantly busy. I'm, I, I'm the head of administration and public works with Council President Morton, and I can tell you these people are busy. They just were busy. And I, I can uh, say the same for each and every one of the counselors um, uh, that they oversee, like the police department, planning, and the library. Uh, they are just doing a lot of stuff. So that's what I have to report on. Let's go to Council President Morton. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Big congratulations uh, are, in, are in order after our uh, Lake of Oregon Cities meeting. John Walsh, our city manager, oh, yes. uh, was uh, uh, appointed to the, uh, uh, or selected to be a, the, uh, on serve as the board, as our city manager. And this is somewhat regional too. A lot of attention to John and to our sister city, Scapoos, uh, with their manager, city manager, uh, uh, Mike Sykes, uh, got an exceptional award, uh, one of the most outstanding awards from the uh, League of uh, Oregon Cities for uh, exceptional service. And um, uh, it's really interesting to know that uh, in our region, we have good governance uh, all the way through from the top down. And uh, that speaks well for our, both our city managers. Congratulations, John. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Congratulations. On another, uh, on another note, we have, uh, I just wanted to pass on from uh, our Parks Commission, uh, which is a, which is, I think, a phenomenal uh, community outreach. Uh, they are recommending that uh, we go forward with uh, their urban trail design, uh, asking the staff to move forward on a plan for uh, getting the urban trail on paper or on electronic devices, if nothing else. Uh, so that's their recommendation. And I think that we all heard and we can recall when Jerry Belcher came to the council uh, several months ago and uh, outline the, uh, what the urban trail, where the urban trail would go. And, uh, uh, and it, it uh, and he recommended at that time, and I rec followed up on the recommendations that staff follow up on some kind of planning. And uh, it, so far we haven't heard anything. And so I'm asking the council to get behind me and, and ask the staff to at least start some planning on our pathways in our city from one destination to another, from one place to, from one place to another. And somehow that can be on paper, it can just be a plan, 
Uh, but it needs, starts, needs some implementation so that we are responding to our citizens who uh, are on our committees. They are volunteers who have done a lot of hard work and uh, are, and they're all behind this on the Parks Commission to move forward in some way. It's up to the staff to move it forward, I think, in some capacity. And I hope the council is behind that. It means that voters who are coming in will know how to get to the IGA store uh, in four different ways, three or four different ways, maybe up Columbia Boulevard, uh, or maybe through uh, down Riverfront uh, uh, path, up to Knob Hill, over to uh, uh, 4th Street, and to the, or the 5th Street uh, path, uh, up to 6th, uh, and uh, take the uh, trail to Eisensmith Pool. I mean, there are so many ways that we can get, that people can get up to IGA and back in different ways, in loops and whatever. All we need to do is recognize it. It would be the same thing as if we were having uh, our kids or our friends coming into town, uh, we take them on a little walking tour and they don't know the way, but we do. So why can't we put that down uh, on a brochure or on some electronic uh, medium on our cell phones so that people can get from point A to point B? They, people have got to know where IGA is of all things. People should know uh, where a lot of the, you know, the, the layout of our towns. So how to get to McCormick Park if you want, if there is a, if there's play structures and if, could we, could you walk there from downtown? You most certainly can. How can you do it? Well, you look at a map, a trail map, an urban trail map, and it tells you how to get there, possibly in several different ways and possibly looping. We could have all the mileage on it. We could have all kinds of things, all kinds of information on pamphlets like that. And so uh, I just think that if the, if the staff gets together and start to recommend how we can, how the best go about uh, getting those things accomplished, it would be a big shot in the arm. And I was, I'm asking the council to get behind me and, uh, encourage the staff to go forward on that. Well, I don't think you have any counselors that's opposed to that. I think uh, the, the liability issue was what we were, was discussed earlier, as I heard a little bit of the discussion. Um, and uh, I'm definitely in, in favor of trying to figure out something. I don't know if it was just something that said uh, this is connectivity, but where the city is not liable, you still need to watch out for cars. Um, you, it could be occasion where you're walking on a street with no sidewalk. Um, if there's some type of liability waiver, either that's through legal that we get that drawn up or also like on some of those areas, because Jerry Belcher did do a great presentation and we seen that there was a few areas on the figure eight path that he gave us. Anybody, my question would be, has anybody from the um, Park Commission approached those houses up there to see if they would give back some of the easement that was given to them for a sidewalk? The other thing, don't forget a bike path or bike trails or best bike ways for these things too. So a bike is a motor vehicle. And it can travel on a road like a like a um, car does. As a matter of fact, it is close to. I know Portland kind of sets it aside and gives them their own lane, but a bike is a actual vehicle. You can get a buoy on a bike. The uh, real problem around here is where the least hills are. It's a preferred bike path. A suggestion thereof. So, um, I, I I think you definitely got the support of most of us. It's just those those sticking points, Doug, that are really tough. To, I don't know how the rest of the council out here, Council Popes, but any up there and. I think I think we got attention, and I think people are having conversations that maybe got you know. Everybody's so busy, as you pointed out, 
that it kind of slipped to the bottom of the list. And I think it's a good reminder over these winter months to look at what we can do about marking them and delineating them because I lived out here for a few years before I found all the staircases. And it's like, at the very least, neighbors should know, oh, well, this is a shortcut to my friend's house. And it's like, you know, just simple stuff like that, I think, delineating that. So kids walking to school or walking to the store, going to swim class, know the, the shortcut on how to get there, the safe way. And I think that staff is definitely open and is looking at all of that. And that's the first step is getting it on paper, getting it digitally so people can refer to it at least because right now we don't have it that way. And you have to start somewhere. And I think having it digitally is at least the first step to starting well, the think, conversation. Thank you, Jenny. And I think liability is a, a pretty poor excuse for not moving forward uh, on doing this because we're, our, we're liable for not having sidewalks as well. We're liable for not providing safety. So if we at least attempt to get people uh, on, you know, from point A to point B in the most safe way that we know as pedestrians, I think that's, I, I think that's a good attempt. And I don't see where, if, where we really become liable, if it's a good intention to get safely move people from one point to another. Are we telling them that they can't walk? Are we telling them that they have to take a, a uh, 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 automobile transportation. What are we telling them? Well, I mean, we, what we're trying to do, what the Parks Commission is trying to do is to get people out and about, and especially the parks and trails. And that's, so somebody comes up with a trail and, we, and, you, and it makes sense to everyone. Uh, and it's kind of like, no, we can't go forward on it because it's it will be liable. I think that's a pretty poor excuse, really. And I think that it's up to the staff to find their way around those liabilities. Then. Man, that's 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 where I, I just want to let you know that's where I got my information from with staff about the liability. I'm yeah, I know. Not, I'm not just throwing it out there like I'm, oh, I know. I, I know, that's man. For me, but that's what that's way it made you made it made me feel and made it sound is that that. No, that has been recommended by staff who we have to entrust our engineers and our uh, the girl who drew up, you know, Jenny Dimcho. Um, and one of my remedies was, has anybody ever approached anybody on South Third, which was an area that was in discussion about sidewalks and asked, anybody ever even knocked on a door and asked, hey, would you allow us to put a public sidewalk? We gave you that property years ago going to have to buy it back and we just want to put a sidewalk for walking has anybody even done that my guess is no but i don't know yeah exactly yeah thanks man you're the uh, computer guru uh, have we ever approached google to see what they have in street maps whether that would also include the trails no we have never approached google to do that because I wonder if they have a package just for, you know, small areas. Well, I don't, I think it would be a very easy design. Jenny said that we could actually have in the conversation earlier was um, to have this an app drawn up by PSU students, which is relatively cheap. And then it's just a, uh, you, what are they called, Matt, where you put your phone up to them, the, the identification? Uh, QR codes. QR codes. And uh, that it just pops up on electronic devices, which was, it sounded, I mean, that's the future. Well, I, you know, I was told by staff early on that this needed to be in a, we can't move forward and you'll have to talk about it and then, and then to do your design and think about what you want to do and put it into the master plan. And my, my response uh, was, we already did that. We already did that in terms of, in terms of trails, of uh, how uh, how we can go about doing the trails and give an, give us the most flexibility. And let me read something out of the master plan. This is uh, there's different types of trails identified in the master plan. 
One is local access trails along roadways. And that's exactly what we're talking about, along roadways, and then it goes off into nature areas and back into the roadways. It says, uh, type one, no bike lane. On low volume, low speed roadways, example, residential or neighborhood streets, many cyclists can safely share the road with vehicles. Pedestrians should be separated from the roadway with a buffer, which could be, in my mind, pink or curb and a fair use of path as, or sidewalk. So it gives us, it gives us in our master plan, an idea that we can do this. And so that's what I'm going by in terms of looking that it is in our master plan. So that is not a valid, valid excuse of not moving forward. And I heard that as a comment that it needs to be in the master plan first. And I'm thinking it is, it is. And here it is. I mean, so I thought I'd bring that forward. So that I just would like, I would just like this not to disappear because the people in the Parks Commission have worked very hard on this. They're passionate about it. Uh, and I think Rachel went out with Mr. Belcher and Mr. Belcher showed her what the actual uh, uh, route was that he endorsed. And she was all excited about it. Everyone gets excited about it, except when it gets to the desk of someone who says it can't happen. So anyway, I hope it happens and um, I'll be beaten on that drum for quite a, quite some time, I think. Hey Doug, uh, when is your next Parks Commission mini, uh, meeting? Uh, that would be the second Monday of uh, the month. Second Monday of the month? That's, yes. Uh, let's put on an action item on our council work session for the third Wednesday of November and invite a Parks Commission to revisit this idea and uh, and because first and foremost we got to know the trails you know we 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 got to know the trails so um All right yes yep okay so let's do so that. thank thank you mayor I, I appreciate that i hope we get the uh the nod from the rest of the council as well we okay with that oh thank it, you it's thank totally you up, yeah it's totally up to me on that so yeah. you got the right guy <laughs> I would, I've been now hold it. We could take it to a boat. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Yep. Yeah, I was hoping to have a, a comment, butt into that comment, this conversation, and, and just talk about, you know, a lot of talk about staff. And you know, this is just a fantastic concept of, you know, connecting places, providing information both to public and, and, and people visiting the community and having those resources to, you know, you know, to get to where they want to go or where we want to steer them. And you know we are, and to some degree, we already have a lot of this through the the bike plan, you know, bike plans. Most of all of those are non-striped local streets that are making those connections. And to the extent we can find a solution to safely, you know, develop this share the road concept, uh, you know, I think it has sound merit, and we can, we can certainly move forward. But when you get to you know, the technical issues about. Uh, you know the, what signage looks like, you know, where, where striping can go. You know that that all, that all gets to an engineering manual for the uniform traffic control devices, and it's very thick and complex and compliant, and you know it gives you kind of limited limited options and how you can get there. But there there are some solutions, and you're seeing things change. I mean, even the the waterfront trail, the waterfront uh, design has a Shero concept where you're having you know cars and bikes you know sharing the same space, and that slows people down. And you know, having people out is very neighborly, creates a lot of connections, and uh, it's good for visitors. And and uh, it's a really positive thing in my mind. So, yeah, I think thank thank you, John. And I and I do think that uh, you know, if we can do it for deer and elk, you know, like elk crossing and uh, watch out for deer. I mean, we can do it for people as well, right? I mean, all it takes is a little bit of signage. Uh, it just, it's a very simple thing. Uh, uh, you missed my corny joke earlier, Doug, because we were talking earlier. And, and <laughs> you, you took off, but uh, I said I seen a, a 
deer at least 400 yards away from that deer crossing sign. He was off the road <laughs> illegally. <laughs> so um, why don't we go ahead and at least dock it a half an hour for that um, on that, Kathy, on that um, third Wednesday for the discussion of this, just to get it going forward, not lose traction. Thank you, Mayor. Yep. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, uh, Councilor Locke. Just, uh, I'd like to maybe put on our next meeting's agenda to talk about uh, Cascades, some of the issues over there, and uh, talk about uh, the two and a half years they dumped stuff into our lagoon and what we're going to do about it. Is, is that, do they owe us money? Uh, I would think so. Well, um, millions. I think we need to have Aaron maybe uh, give us a presentation on what happened, where we're at with that. Yeah. Boy, that'd be important for me to, to hear. So I'd certainly like to know how how much uh, has been dumped in there and, and, and they haven't been charged for it. I, I well, they, So they are charged for it, John. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Oh, they're charged for it, yeah. It's based off strength. Yeah, because I, I questioned that too as well. And I went right to Aaron and talked to him and he said, no, we're charging them. I think an update, because we haven't heard from Aaron in a while, I think an update, I would like to, I went over and actually met with Aaron in the last couple of weeks, and I think it would, I would, if, I think there's a merit to having him report and having us be able to ask, to ask the questions. Because if, if you don't ever go talk to Aaron, how would, you know, sometimes you don't get the full impact in a written report. So... You're saying that they don't owe us anything for dumping in the lagoon for two and a half years? John? I'm not saying, I'm just saying that if, you're, if that's directed towards me, I, <laughs> uh, I am saying that they have a, a rate that they're charged for their discharge, yes. Yes, but not for dumping solids in the lagoon, though. They were not charged for that. There was as far as I know, anyway. I think it'd be good to get out of the bottom of this. I agree with uh, Jenny wholeheartedly that it'd be good to if have If there's space, there. if there's, whenever there's, at this, as soon as there's space to at least clear the air and get us all up to speed on that and where we are this year. Cause I know they had a lot of clarifier problems last year. Yeah. The next November meeting on November 4th, you do not have any department reports. Well, let's have Aaron come in. Tell Aaron come in and just do a presentation and answer a few questions. Is there more than that? Is it more more than just the, the lagoon? Well, just to talk about what what Cascades is the the letter they sent us and and kind of what what we feel our rights are and where we need to be. So I would have probably advise having yeah legal a, counsel to. Yes, we probably should have a, if we need to, we need to have a meeting and uh, um, if it has to be an executive session uh, just because of protecting the city, um, then that's what we need to do. So that's kind of what I'm gathering here needs to happen. So um, thinking sometime in late, no, well, no Whenever good. John can pull it together, because it sounds like John needs to do some coordination. We've got a lot of meetings. We we got also we got uh, we did our Zoom meeting for interviews. We're back Monday in person for personal interviews, and then uh, um, we have our November fourth. Then we have our council meeting, and then we have Thanksgiving. That's when we have, do we want to do it like second week in November? Or do we want to do it sooner than later? John, what do you recommend? Uh, 
I'd like to consult with our council to see if it's appropriate to have an executive session at the November 4th meeting and then maybe a full report at the, the second meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Um, all right, Councilor Lofton, was that it? That's it. Okay, uh, Councilor Carlson. Okay, I have kind of a lot of things kind of all over the place. So I just wanted to put the thank you out there. I don't know if a lot of our citizens realize that our rec and department and our youth librarian have um, kind of retrofitted their transit. And so they're kind of like activities on wheels and they're going from park to park, apartment complex to apartment complex, setting up activities for kids and doing outreach in our community. And they're getting that all up and going because parents that have been homeschooling and distance learning their kids are really under a lot of stress and trying to meet the standards for COVID and still engage these children. Um, they've had just a tremendous response, both from community sponsors and from parents, but it's gone really good. And what I've seen, it's everybody's so excited and so happy, and they're happy to be distance learning. They're happy to be running around, and the parents are super happy. And I just wanted to thank um, the youth librarian and the rec staff for that, getting creative and finding ways to still do outreach to our young people. And also, um, in the past past couple of years, we've done the trunk or treat at the police station. They are doing a drive through, totally free. So people need to get signed up so they have their spot. Um, and they're going to do where the kids are in their costumes in the car, and they get to drive through and see the little spooktacular stuff that they've got going on. Quite the little goodie bags for all the kids over there. And I think that's kind of keeping in the spirit of things and you know, giving back to our, our kids that have had just a really sucky year with this COVID. They don't understand why they have to stay home. They don't get to go to school. But I just appreciate them, community partners, businesses stepping up and donating and putting this together. It's just huge. And that's why people live out here is because people just care so much. And I wanted to appreciate Michael, the building inspector that won the award today. I know that we put a shout out to him earlier, but not everybody sees the earlier meeting. Um, the next thing is planning commission has two terms. Two planning commissioners terms are up the end of this year. So if people are interested in serving their community and want to be part of planning, people have a lot of questions like, why are there apartments here? Why is this there? If you want an opportunity to serve your community, there's applications on the city website and you can fill that out and turn it in. And we'll be doing interviews um, sometime in November. But there are two... Um, two slots terms to end that we will make choices for in the coming weeks. So feel free to apply for those. And the next thing is normally brought up by Councillor Morton. Um, um, because of COVID, it might be different is Veterans Day 1111. And I know that's next month, but because of COVID, and it's like, I just, you know, I, the Youth Council and I wrote letters to the vets, to the National Guard coming home and did that project and just thinking about Veterans Day and wondering if, if there's something we could do with the virtual to Zoom to appreciate our veterans and just for the city to be, I'm just gonna put it out there to Doug because you communicate with that group. If there's a way that we built that beautiful monument that we are support them in whatever way they wanna celebrate that day and to honor their service. And I just wanna put it out there in plenty of time if they wanna coordinate that or if you need help or whatever, just kind of put that on the radar that we're not gonna forget them just because of COVID because their service is more important now than ever as we wanna appreciate those young men and women. Thank That's you, Jenny. That's what I got. Thank you, Jenny. Councilor Topaz. I have two things. One will be the uh, CAG meeting down at the Portland. They had three presentations. The other thing I've been asked by a number of citizens, I'm gonna put forth a motion to have a three-year audit of the tourism Halloween uh, affair, including time and effort storage that the city maintenance group uh, applies to that. I've got too many questions and they want transparency. So I'm putting forth a motion to have an outside audit of the Halloween town.
I thank you for showing the citizens of St. Helen that you don't want to tell them what's going on. Well, okay. we, Mr. Topaz, you've made this motion before and we've talked about auditing these numbers and we've talked about looking at them and we have directed staff accordingly because you've had the same motion. I know this I've is like the third motion. time you brought it up. I brought it up, but I've never made a motion. But we've talked about looking at it and have. studying it. And, and I'm telling you what the people on the street are asking me to do. And that's what I'm doing. I'm now re passing on what the citizens of St. Helen want me to do, and that's make a motion for the audit. They, uh, I assume, have watched on Facebook and seen the same thing, but that's where it is. I and think we can fold that into our regular audit, Matt. Uh, what's your what's no, your feeling third, in terms of in, in terms? Well, hold it. I get interrupted, so I don't know what I what I. Topaz, can I speak? Sure, go ahead. Okay, Matt, is it, are we able and capable of folding that piece into our regular audit? Uh, and is, hasn't that been done in the past? And uh, tell us what you think. A couple notes that I will re reiterate and, and again on uh, the conversation that Mr. Topaz has brought up numerous times. The city is audited every year. You re receive a report from the auditor along with the actual documentation that's on our website of the audit of all of our financials, revenue and expenses. That does include the tourism fund. Um, I believe what Councilor Topaz is insinuating is that he does not feel that our current audit goes deep enough into the individual transactions of the tourism fund. For that reason, depending on if I'm understanding Councillor Topaz's motion, is that he would like an audit of specifically the tourism fund in greater detail. That is something that would be a separate audit and would not be included in our yearly audit because of the in-depthness that he, I believe he is trying to request. That is correct. And that is what I am asking for the citizens of St. Helens. I, I know you take it that I'm giving it to you personally, but this is what I'm being asked. I have an awful lot of anger out there in the woods over Halloween Town, whether it's true or not. If everything comes out great, then you're going to be smelling like a rose and it's going to shut a lot of people up. If it comes up, you've got a problem, then you've got to fix it. But right now, they want a third party from outside. And, and it's it's a political push. I agree. Oh, uh, I do. I will, I will just say this: is I'm not going to comment too much on it because I seen the comments from the two ladies on our last meeting. Um, apparently, mother and daughter. Who um, I have. We explained that this year is very unique. I was also read the comments that we are getting kickbacks, and uh, I would absolutely am appalled that you even would say that about me and this council. And, and I think that's the main push. You can clearly go back and look at the records of Facebook and read it and read the comments of the two individuals, specifically Councilor Topaz. And I, I told you it was very unique situation this year with COVID that it doesn't, we were on board and you also were in that meeting when we did say we were going to audit if it was gonna be a normal year, but nothing's been normal about 2020. The request that's was my, for three years. That is we had it, three years. We, well, I heard you, Councilor Topaz, almost. Uh, the request today was three years. That, that's what I said. Three years is what I've been asked to go. So we go back into our past and see how well we've been doing as we come forward, and this year gets into it also. Councilor Copeland. I'm, I'm, I'm now reporting to you from the citizens of St. Helen, and you just have told them that they no, have information. You're interrupting me. If you want me to comment, you ask us information, and then you interrupt me. Give it correctly then, please. What was incorrect about what I said? You said one year, and I didn't, I've never said one No, year. I said last year we all agreed that we were going to audit tourism. That was probably in 
I think it was before July of last year because we had talked about the RFP for that position as well at that same meeting. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. That was not last year. That was this year. But, this uh, July was the RFP that started out this this year's January. We talked about it last year that we were going to put it out shortly after so we could start getting the request because we knew everything that was coming on board. I, that's just what I recall. And apparently you... No, that, no, what you said is correct. This is a new thing. What you said is correct. This is something that people have been pushing for this year. What is what is what I said before I got interrupted is that we are going to last year we decided we were going to audit tourism this year. That's correct. Yes. There's no question and about we were that. We're going to put out the RFP early enough. Then COVID came along in February, March. It really took off, and in in late March, early April is when I declared a state of emergency for our city which shut down and halted everything. And Tina took a uh, furlough, self furloughed for two months and there was nothing going to happen. And then governor's restriction lifted to two events to 250. So this is a very unique year. Um, and that's why we didn't move forward with the following the process is because it's not a normal year. That's what happened and now you're Wanting us to go back three years. Okay, no, that's correct. No, 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 what you said is correct. So I'm just saying the stuff that you were mentioned, one of them was storage, right? That's correct. You realize the city owns all that stuff. Well, if they don't well, own well, it, I asked you a question. I asked you, I, I asked you a question. Do you realize the city owns that entire square? Good. And all the equipment. Then show that on the order to make people happy. The, the people are not understanding what you're doing, and the way they want to find out is with an order. And that's why they want to go back three years to see what's happened. Now, this is different than what we started in July. Understand this is a different request. It's the same words, but it's a different request. Councilor Topaz, I'm not angry. I, what you could have did is just ask me, who owns that? Does Tina own it, or do we own it? I don't know. And that's and well, nobody else does. So, Matt's trying to talk. Matt keeps putting his hand up. So I, I just wondered if Matt had clarifying statements. Maybe we need to have a clarifying meeting with Councilor Topaz, which if it needs to be with John and Tina on what the city owns and what it doesn't own and what Tina's responsibilities are, because I think there's a lot of confusion here on what is actually we own versus what Tina does and supports the city and assists the city in acquiring and building a tourism. Tina is building this. She doesn't plan on being here forever. You know? I am not asking for me because this information I can get from John. I am asking this for the people of the city of St. Helens who have asked me to ask you because they do not know and they cannot be in John's room altogether. And that is what I am asking. One last That's by a third party auditor. Okay. So everybody gets to know it. I can find out real quick from John or whoever. That's it's not my problem at this time. I'm trying to get the point across that I've been asked by a number of people, more than 10, actually more than 20, to find out what's going on. Uh, so okay. If we could just talk calmly, like adults, we're we're all adults here. So I understand what I'm asking. We do. We're that's, just that's having a conversation. Three years. Are, are we going to second it or not? Are we just going to discuss? I, I think it is fiscally irresponsible to try to go back and track. Now, I want to make one last point to anybody watching out there, probably people commenting right now on Facebook as we speak, that these are not your tax dollars being used. They are tax dollars that are allocated from the hotel tax, tourism tax, that is none of your tax dollars and is only directed to bring in tourists from outside the area. Cannot be used in any other, 10% of it can be used for administration. Other than that, 
the allocated funds come from the hotel tax, which are none, none of your tax dollars being spent on this. I want to make that clear as well. And is this an audit that you're requesting on uh, Tina's business? Or which is will this be taxpayer an audit? Dollars, which will be taxpayer dollars. Mr. Topaz, is this is this a is this an audit that you're asking on Tina and Chris's business, uh, how they conduct their how they are running their personal business, their corporation, or are you asking for the city for the city tourism fund audit? What are you asking for? Okay, I'm asking. I'm confused. Okay, well, slowly listen. The city has a Halloween town affair, which we hire an outside vendor, Tina, to do, correct? And there are a number of things. We put signs up, we have vendors, we pay for things. We want an audit for what the city has to pay, either in time or in monies. I'm not worried about where, where the funds come from and say, okay, we spent $75 to get 400 vendors here and they each paid us nine cents. That is an audit. So we have a, a discussion of how much the city had to pay for whatever pieces that we had to buy, things we had to hang on city hall. How much did we uh, ask our vendors to pay for us in permits? Did we get any money beyond that? These details we're ordering the city's effect on Halloween Town. What did the city pay for to have Halloween Town here? Councilor Kilpass, so you just want a Halloween Town? Just that's all we're asking. Okay, you don't want what else she does? No, we're just talking Halloween Town. That's all we, you know, that's well, what I've been trying that, to say. Not, that's not that's not a sufficient audit. We talked about the entire year of thirteen nights, what she manages to Fourth of July, what she manages to Halloween Town, what she manages, and also the Christmas ships, which she manages. I don't care about that. I'm talking about Halloween Town. Well, you now, can't some of this part of it. Some of this she starts earlier in the year. Correct. So there's. A couple of dollars in January, four or five dollars in July, and so on. I want an audit. What I've been asked is to have an audit of what Halloween Town costs, what it brings in for three years, so we have an idea. Because we originally said this is going to start up, get larger, and get larger. Now this year we got the virus, which really screwed things up in a lot of ways. But people are upset, and they want to know how much is going to Halloween Town. Councilor Copez, we spent twelve to fifteen thousand dollars on Fourth of July just in the fireworks. And you said I, I want the order of just no, oh, but you said four or five, no. You said four or five dollars, and she goes out and gets sponsors in order to raise that revenue for our fireworks. That was just a word. It wasn't an accurate number. Well, Please. No, but, but you, you know, should, as, a counselor, as a counselor, you should be accurate with your numbers. You should be, you should have. If I had a good audit, I would be, and I don't have a good audit. You haven't asked anybody. I just and asked, I, and I got told no. Well, that's, that's what I just no, said. I asked for an audit right now. No, that's, a, you've never asked anybody about numbers prior to this. You're going to. That, you're that is correct. That is correct. I have not been asked by the citizens until now. So it is your job as a counselor to educate yourself and find out the information. You are not refused by me or any counselor or any staff to ask these questions. But you're throwing out numbers that are fictitious and you haven't done your homework around this. You haven't been listening. I'm I sorry, am listening. Ready. You're throwing you out can put any out. number down until I get a good audit from a third party. Nothing makes how any much, sense. How much does a band cost? Is it is it is it five hundred bucks or is it really twenty five hundred bucks for thirteen nights? I mean, these are all questions that you could just ask Tina. She's in the office quite often, and uh, so that's why I, I guess I'm confused on some of your numbers here. And we all agreed that we'd like to audit this process, and I explained why 
it didn't happen this year. And all of a sudden, you're wanting to take taxpayer dollars, because that's what it's going to come out of, to audit, not to audit, and try to figure out every little aspect of um you, that's you, correct you correct. mentioned you mentioned storage yes i you mentioned storage which the city owns all those out there and so storage is our buildings and our it is our um we own the pumpkins we own the the city owns all that stuff that's correct and okay if you've got 10 pumpkins and you use 10,000 square feet the city has put into Halloween Town whatever it costs for storing 10,000 square feet of material. That's the cost to Halloween Town. Now, the fact that there's no money involved in it that you have to take out of the tourism dollars, Councilor that's Kirk, shown up. Uh, and I'm not here to argue with you, but you know that you know as well as I do, we have a bunch of moving parts in this city. And what, what you, you always bring something to throw a wrench in all the work. My administrator is sitting here fretting over all this show that we're having displayed here in the public eye, not being professional. And you are disrupting once again, the city moving forward. And you, we have clearly explained our stance on auditing the tourism. Yes, you've so said we, no. I, I understand that. No, and you, I, we did not say no. That is totally not true. Now, any other counselor would want to? I mean, here's this is. I mean, this is why we're trying. The purpose of me asking questions is to try to come up with something that actually makes sense to me. Because no counselor comes in and just makes demands of the city, just like no one citizen comes in and makes demands. Um, you know, when you have a report, you report on stuff that everybody kind of already knows about not here's my surprise card and just come out of thin air. I think that I'm concerned overall that I would like to see financial reporting just in general of tourism, you know, and if we want to go deeper, it's like, you know, John, between John and Matt, they know what we've spent because they wrote the checks. So, I mean, it's like, it's pretty obvious and you can look at, this is how many people attended this year and look at the track. Even if you talked about, numbers and trends and profitability because something that's happened in the last five years is 13 nights is in the black halloween town is in the black for the first time ever and it's like it's always been you know we never got sponsors we never had the buy-in from the community and it's like i think it, it's a good idea to look at halloween town over a longer period of time of where it started five eight years ago to where it is today and to have those numbers but we need to give staff a chance to pull those numbers together, to look at them as a council and have our contractor prepared before we go, okay, let's go spend eight, ten thousand dollars on an audit. We just we have to, you can't just, it's not like the federal marshals coming in here with the IRS, they're gonna just lock up the books. It's you have to kind of have your ducks in a row. And that was my point is to accuse us of not wanting to listen to our citizens, I kind of take personal offense because I'm very sensitive to what our citizens want. I'm very sensitive to being good stewards of our assets and of our staff and of our citizenry and our parks. Of course, we want to take care of it. We don't do this because it's, you know, I have nothing better to do on a Wednesday night, but it's like we need to direct staff to gather that information and come back and put it on the agenda so we can come prepared and have the numbers in front of us rather than shoot from the hip and then make an educated plan about how to look into the past and how to contract a future RFP to make it required part of the job. So because I, it's like, we have to get it all together. You don't just pull something like, here's my secret, get out of jail free card. Like, yeah, well, here's my ace in the hole kind of thing. And it's like, that's, that's, that's not how you do business. That's exactly what, it, it, Jenny, you explained it perfectly. Councilor Copez, you like coming in dropping bombs. And the bottom line is, is we're going to put this on a December item of action, whether it be the first week of December or the third week of December. 
and we're going to discuss this, Councillor Topaz. Give it all the time it deserves. Yes. And we're going to move forward with the audit process like we discussed in going forward last year. No matter what, COVID or no COVID, we're going to start the process. There are electronic tickets. There's receipts. We will have it all, 100%. But you dropped the bomb. You never asked, talked to me about it. You never talked to John Walsh about it like you never do. And you're always disrupting progress and disrupting staff with when you come in, you come into city hall, just like you came into this meeting and it's not acceptable. And I, I, I am, the citizens should be aware. This is what they see. This is what our staff sees when you come running into city hall. Is yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm all about squelching the, the side talk and the division in this community. I was interviewed for the with the paper this week and it's like, how can we heal these divides? Because this community is so caring and so loving. If you watch all the work that went on at the fairgrounds for those evacuees and people pouring their money, their heart and everything into helping each other. And it's like, we need as a council to be a better ambassador of that to potential businesses potential employers that want to live move out here to say that we work together to find solutions. So let's put tourism budget, tourism finances, tourism projection, put it on a budget item and get the numbers out and have a real conversation and then play instead of playing gotcha. Because I want to have a real conversation, Mr. Topaz, not be threatened and not be told I don't care about the citizens because I take personal offense. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Councilor Topaz, I'm going to give Councilor President Morton and Councilor Locke a chance to respond before you want to, before you finish your report. Because this is, this is serious business to us. We are moving the city forward. So which one of you would like to go first, Councilor Locke or Councilor President Morton? Go ahead, Doug. Well, I feel threatened as well. Uh, you know, it comes out and you, when you asked for it and you didn't get a second and then you sarcastically, you know, told us that we didn't care. I, I was offended by that. And I think Jenny said it beautifully that when you offend people, then, you know, then you have to kind of start to take sides. I go, what do you mean? I don't care about uh I don't care about uh, the people in the community. Why did you say that? You don't, that's a threat. It's a threat to all of us. So I've, you know, I've been a coach all my life and the deal is, is to bring people together and work together. And when this kind of behavior happens, it separates people. And I, we get nothing done because all we do then is try to resolve the issue that was presented. And that's where our energy is going. And I understand, uh, I understand what uh, the mayor is saying by it's a waste of energy. And, and he says we're going backwards, you know, and we are going backwards if we spend all our time doing these kinds of things. Need to get together as a team. If I, I came and I asked the council tonight if they could get behind an issue. And I asked permission for that. If some of the council would have said no, I would have gone along with it. Uh, I just would have, because that's the way, that's the way people feel. If it would be three to two, fine. If it would have been three to two in favor, that's fine for, you know, for however the chips fall. We know where they're going to fall. And we're trying to work together as, as a team, as a unit. And the most important thing that we can do, Steve, I think is trust each other. Without trust, we have nothing. And I think uh, I, the, the, the teams that I've coached against, I've seen a lack of trust and those teams have fallen apart. They point fingers at each other and nothing gets done. They don't win games. They, 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 they They'd rather be a loser and point fingers. And that's, you know, that, that's what I learned by coaching. And that's what I learned by developing good teams. And so, you know, I don't see it all the way across the board here. And I think we could improve. So I feel 
with this team that I'm as weak as the weakest person on the council and you're taking me down. And so somehow I'm just waiting for you to bring me back up. I, I hope I'm I hope I'm clear because I I I do get taken down when when I I see those kinds of accusations come that I don't care about people in the community. That was that that wasn't right. So anyway, uh, that's my that's my two bits. Thank you, Council President Morton. Councilor Locke. So yeah, just. Jenny and Doug, they, they presented a good case here. And, you know, Steve, you know, all we want to do is work together and, and move the city along. You know, I in, in two months, I'll have my 20 years in and I'm leaving. And there's been a, a hundred things that I would have liked to have seen gotten done, but they didn't. Because why? Because we were doing other things and that's, that's what the rest of the council wanted to do. So I went along with the rest of the council. That's the way a team works. And since you've been on the council, all we've done is gone backwards. We're, we're scared to talk. We don't want to talk to each other. And all you do is turn everything against us. So we just need to be a team, Steve. Well, the hope is that you will be in the black and we'd shut everybody up. But the way you've reacted, we're not in the black and that's scary. Okay, so much for that. Now I'll give you the report from the Portland Harbor. There were three presentations. One presentation was dredging the channel that had been dredged 10 years ago and it has to be redredged. And the requirements are such that they have to sample the spoil areas, actually silt areas. And the fact that it's choking the channel off to the first time they'll be able to dig uh, dirt out and clear the channel because of the bureaucracy is four and a half years. Uh, and this is, as I say, this is previously dredged material, but to go through all the federal steps. Uh, the most important comment in this presentation was somebody said, you know, since we're getting rid of fossil fuels, let's just close the Portland Harbor and not dredge it at all. And you pointing out that we have some extreme attitudes about the importance of what we're doing and the importance of Portland Harbor versus, as I say, one person. And this person's surprisingly smart and very much an environmentalist. But the attitude was, for this one reason, we're gonna close the uh, port down. The second uh, presentation was the GASCO cleaning the tar and the oil from the old gas plant that was getting into the river. And we showed pictures of chunks, the size of a five gallon pail of tar and stuff getting into the river. And uh, they've got more to do and some of the contamination is 120 foot deep. The most important comment during this presentation is somebody worried about the, uh, as they're digging this, that they would contaminate the water to the people over at Cathedral Park. And it was explained to them that the way the river runs, none of the gank on the west side ever gets over to the east side. In fact, it goes down the Multnomah Channel. And the discussion was that the other side of the Portland Harbor is okay. The point is that all that stuff coming down the Multnomah Channel that's being up in Portland comes down in front of St. Helens. Um, we should ha keep our eye on what they're doing because if it's happening on the west side of Portland Harbor, it's going to get here. And it was also made a point of that when we dig this stuff out, it has to go to a repository that can never get back in the environment and somehow Wherever this stuff is shipped to, it's going to have to be certified that it can never get back into the environment. People pretty much agreed with that. But the Portland Harbor work really is only interested in the Portland Harbor, whatever goes downstream. At this point, they're paying no attention to. 
So that was my report. Thank you. Okay. So, um, any other business before we adjourn? Okay. Not seeing any. Oh. oh. Frost any? warning. If people have hoses out, it's supposed to freeze over the weekend. So it's like there's frost. I thought it was tonight. Somebody else told me it was Friday night. So if you haven't covered or disconnected your hoses, I would hate to see people with irrigation pipes freeze. But I'm hoping that they are up to their weather reports. But I just don't want anybody to be surprised by frost in the next couple of days. Drive safe. Pick the fruit off your trees. Yes. <laughs> Cover those tomatoes. Okay. So with that being said, um, good night and we are adjourned.